Hi there. In this video, we're going to be forming the R squared form of the F statistic. And we're going to be comparing it with what we had before in terms of the sort of sum of square residual form of the F statistic. So what's the idea here? Well, the idea is that we have some sort of regression equation, which is y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2, all the way through to sort of plus beta p xp. And the null hypothesis which we're testing here is a sort of hypothesis under a number of coefficients. So we sort of got, well, let's say we're testing beta 2 um, through all the way through to um, beta p are all identically equal to zero. So the effective variables x2 through to xp are essentially insignificant under the null hypothesis. And our alternative hypothesis is that if any of these particular relationships isn't true, so some sort of beta i um, doesn't equal zero, where i is a sort of member in the set of 2 to p. Okay, so that's what we're testing here. And we talked about how we would do this using um, the sum of square residuals. So the idea is that we would get the sum of square residuals from this original unrestricted case, right? And then we'd have to run an auxiliary regression, which was y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x1, where in the second regression, we place the constraints on our coefficients that essentially are beta 2 is equal to uh, beta p and all the other sort of uh, coefficients in between. And they're all identically equal to zero. So the idea is that this is our restricted model and we get a sum of square residuals under our restricted model. And by comparing how different these two values are, it is a sort of a measure of how well our variables x2 through xp can help us predict variations in the dependent variable. Unsurprisingly, we can do exactly the same sort of test, but using the R squared. So we get our R squared for our unrestricted model, and we get an R squared for our restricted model. So how do we then go about forming our F test or our F statistic in this particular case? Well, we expect the R squared for the um, unrestricted model to be greater than the R squared for the restricted model, because remember what R squared is, it's a sort of our, it's our measure of the ability of the model to explain variations or deviations in Y away from its mean. So when we have more explanatory variables in a particular model rather than fewer, then whether we've sort of got truly statistically significant variables or whether we've got just rubbish, the R squared for the unrestricted model is generally always going to be greater than the R squared for the restricted model. So we should have formed our numerator by sort of taking the R squared for the unrestricted model and taking off the R squared for the restricted model. And we need to sort of compare absolute deviations um, in our sort of R squared. And we need to compare that with something. So what we do actually is we divide it again through by sort of 1 minus the R squared for the unrestricted model. Because actually what we're doing here, if you just sort of compare 1 minus R squared for the unrestricted model with the sum of square residuals, then actually they would be absolutely identical. So the, the, the actual denominator is exactly the same. I've just phrased it in R squared rather than the sum of square residuals. But then we need to um, normalize this, uh, or not normalize this, we need to standardize it rather. So we divide the numerator through by the number of restrictions, which in this case, um, we've actually got sort of p minus one restrictions. The, we're taking off one because we're assuming that in this case, variable x1 is significant. So we're not testing under the null hypothesis that beta one is equal to zero. And the denominator here, we have to divide through by the number of degrees of freedom in our original model. Well, how many degrees of freedom does it have? Well, it has n minus um, p minus 1, because there are sort of n points in our sample, and there are p plus 1 first order constraints, which are placed on our model under least squares. Okay, so that's the sort of f um, in terms of the r squared of the two regressions. When we use statistical software, normally if we just run this sort of original regression here, it will already give us an F statistic. So what does that actually mean? Because I haven't told it to do any explicit tests. Well, actually what it's testing under that with that F statistic is it's testing 
the null hypothesis or testing against the null hypothesis that beta 1 is equal to beta 2, which is equal to sort of beta p, which is equal to 0. So we're testing to see whether all of our independent variables, with the exception of the constant, are in fact equal to 0, or sorry, the effect of the independent variables are all in fact equal to 0. So we're testing for insignificance of all of the um, independent variables. Well, so how does the F test get amended um, when we are sort of doing this sort of test? Well, the idea here is that our restricted model here would just in fact just be y is equal to alpha. And the restricted model when y is equal to alpha will actually have an r squared of zero because remember what r squared is, it's our ability, uh, our ability to measure deviations or explain deviations in y away from its mean. And if we're just saying y is equal to alpha or y is equal to its mean, then we're not explaining any deviations in y away from its mean. So when this is actually happening, our r squared for our restricted model is in fact equal to zero. So we can think about what our f statistic will be in this case. Well, in this case, where we're testing for significance of all of our independent variables, we're just going to have an r squared of our model on the top. And we're going to divide that through by um, the number of restrictions which we're placing on that model. Well, if we're testing for all p variables, then we're going to sort of get an r squared divided by p on the top. And the bottom is going to become 1 minus r squared, all divided by the number of degrees of freedom for the bottom model uh, or the unrestricted model, which is in fact going to be n minus p minus 1. Yeah, so this is the f the value of the f which you're quoted in statistical software programs like EVs or Stata. So it's testing the null hypothesis that all of your variables are insignificant.